Hello and welcome to programming. This is video number 27. In this video I'll show you how to create a bouncing icon using Java and JavaFX. So I'll be using the project I created on video number 26. So if you haven't watched that, I recommend you to go to my channel and then search for video number 26. That is called making a dark application with Java, JavaFX. So with that aside, let me show you what it uh, currently look right now. So the old application is kind of dull. We want a bouncing icon instead of just a scaling eye animation. We need to put some anim animation on it. So this still looks kind of bad. So let's try to tidy things up a bit here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make create a new group and then instead of just having to align each icon separately we're gonna make or we're gonna have a layout do it automatically for us just like the way we did with JavaScript there's a layout to um, position the icons for us in JavaFX you can use edge box to align icon to lay out the icon on the uh, at the horizontal level and that's what we want so we just call that box new edge box now if we go here we're gonna see an example that if we put a number in there that's gonna be the spacing that the edge box type is try to laying out the icon for us so let's see we get rid of this and instead of adding the icon to the root directly we're gonna add the icon into the box and then we add the box into the root before we set the root as the root of stage and then show it. Now this is what we have. So it will we'll lay out exactly like that. Now again to get it on top of where the dock is we're gonna have to position the box. So translate X I guess it's one one hundred or one twenty and Y is one hundred and eighty or ninety something. Let's try that out. Not quite. So we just go to two hundred then. Almost. to 20 okay let's post that the uh, exactly what we want now the icons are kinda like too tight we're gonna need some spacing let's put 10 in there do we see when we run 
maybe we need a little more space and then move to let's put the 20 on the space and then 150 for the translation of the X and that is about right now we need bouncing icon so we just kinda wish that there is a bouncing icon the class that we can just instead of image icon we want a bouncing icon which will create and make use of the icon Okay, so because we don't have any um, actual class called bouncing icon, we're gonna need to um, create a class. In a package called docfx, of course we replacing uh, bouncing icon we're replacing image view with bouncing icon the bouncing icon is going to be um, exactly with the same behavior as image view so we're going to be extending all the behavior of image view let's make that public class fix the import and then of course we're gonna have to generate a constructor which will take in an image by clicking on that and then select that one it means will help me create a constructor with parameter image in it. So what we do is we're gonna call constructor on the super class which is image view and pass that image to it. Now are we okay? Yes we are. Now let's see what how it would look. Yes. Except for the scaling because we don't need the scaling on the um, icon we're gonna be embedding animation inside bowsing icon so let's grab all of these and put all of that inside as the behavior of the bowsing icon Now, to fix that, we're gonna have to do some import fixing and code cleaning. That is fine now. So, even though we don't have anything in here, we just said, well, that's what we only need to add and most of the code are inside bowsing icon so all of the behavior are still there okay next we are gonna be let's um, format the code a little bit here Now to make a bouncing animation, here's what 
we need to do we need we need to have an animation a bouncing animation the bouncing animation is going to be um, depends on that's a timeline animation so let's call that a bouncer fix the import it would automatically um, import the white one for you that's from animation of package now for the bowser we are going to have to set the keyframe in order to set keyframe set keyframe for bowser before we start playing the animation that's the whole idea of animating the whole concept of animating so let's put it right there now to play the animation simply call bouncer.play the setup is kind of tedious so you're gonna need to grab other keyframe and try to add a keyframe to it you have the option to add a keyframe one by one each line but it's better to just add all of them and then specify inside what what each keyframe is going to be so I will use that one now these are going to be an array of keyframe so What are the keyframe? Let's fix import and go to the API document. The keyframe is simply just an object specifying which we'll need to give it uh, the duration and the key value as many as we want now let's go a little bit deeper than that each of the let's have two keyframe here the first one will be uh, the keyframe at the time zero so that's duration zero we need to create a new duration zero and for the key value we go going to create a new key value to it Let's create create two keyframe keyframe. Three of them actually. One is at the time the initial time. Second one is in it's at three millisecond after the first keyframe, and that's at the six hundredth. So the key values is going to be. Let's fix the import. Now the key value is going to be. We're gonna need to check. 
check that what can we put it in there a key value is going to need to take what property at what va value for this we are gonna set the location so x translate x property that's the property at uh, 0 now we're gonna be, be bouncing up and down so that would be wine and again the property for the second keyframe is at now bouncing up meaning you're gonna decrease in y by let's say 20 by the way and by the way um, this property right here is going to be double property so the value you set should be a double but I put it uh, put it there as an integer it will automatically convert it to a double or if you want to put that zero in there that would be great the last one would be for coming back down to zero so that basically three keyframe the first one at zero at the um, on the ground level and then the second keyframe is at the top which is 20 pixel above and then drop down to zero again at 600 okay now when we start running this Here's what we get. That's what we get. Basically, it will just uh, bounce up and down. Now, that basically how you create the um, an animation with the timeline. So you create each. Um, you add all the keyframes you want to the timeline, and then start looping it. Now, if you want to bounce inf inf indefinitely you're gonna be you're gonna need to set cycle count to animation dot indefinite non stop bouncing so when we come back here what we get is that that looks kinda weird so it will still uh, it, it just uh, up and down it doesn't feel right so if you go to basic animation 101 you're gonna say that they're gonna say that you're gonna need to um, squish it squash it and then make it bounce so that looks more alive animation than just um, jumping up and down back up and down dab icon sort of mean so instead of this you're gonna be creating a keyframe that will change not only one one key value you're gonna be changing on the scale scaling of the um, on the x-axis and scaling on the y-axis so you can go ahead and put that and specify the scale x property and then give it the value but when you done all that you're gonna see that your code it's kinda not readable so here's what I would do I would just put that line into another method so I can just say that um, create or make keyframe 
Now, the first one should be duration, and the second one should be translate y position. So I put zero zero in there, and then scale factor, the x scale factor. So to simulate a squeeze, squeeze and squash animation. So that's x x scale x factor. I just put down a number in there so this I know that it would give me a good looking animation so um, right now you can just follow me we'll have um, three keyframe as usual The first one will be at zero times zero. That that one should be six hundred, and that one should be at the top. Top should be minus twenty, and drop down to zero after that. And that one should be the normal size at the top and down at the bottom should be squ squash so that is scaling x up a bit to 20% that's 1.2 meaning scaling x at 20% and we'll add another keyframe before it hit the ground to squeeze it so we'll expand the y axis the scaling the Y the Y so that's it now we're gonna be creating a method that will return a keyframe giving that duration and Y position scaling factor in X axis and scaling factor in Y axis so let's uh, put that in a method call make keyframe the first one will be integer that's the duration second one would be scale x S scale y no the second one would be the y position so y scale x scale y that's it we're going to be returning okay let's uh, put let's put all of them in one line so that will be returning key frame this keyframe is going to be at duration D and with the key value of translate Y property at Y and two more this one will be scale x property as x and scale y as y that is all good except the warning the warning saying that um, you're calling a method from constructor but the method is not final or private not private so get rid of the warning by putting the private method in there now let's see how it looks huh? what do we have so far squash squeeze and that looks a lot more alive 
than the one we had earlier and that's the one we needed so the animation is okay now but we're not gonna cycle indefinitely we're gonna be cycling once it's the default anyway so we can just leave it like that it will bounce once but we're not gonna play it right away we will be playing it when the mouth is over the bouncing icon so we're gonna be set on mouse enter hmm. there may there might be separate way we can do this but let's um let's try this we can make the bowser repeat itself one is done set on finish when the bowser is done bouncing up and down it will decide what to do so we just have even handler action even fix all the import and then implement the abstract method so on finish we're gonna be bouncing again if the mount is still inside the bouncing icon so if the mount is in we can we are going to bounce again so bouncer dot play Now we're gonna keep. Uh, we're gonna need to keep track of the uh, that variable right there. So when the mouse is enter, we're gonna set mouse in equal to, and we'll start the animation. So Bowser, not play, and we'll make that a feel so there's no option there so that is mouse in initially the mouse in will be false so that's how it reset it when the mouse is actually exit we're gonna set mouse in to false okay let's try that ah that's good except when it comes down at the floor level the scaling factor is actually kind of bigger because it's squash at that position so when it drops down from the animation once it's done the scale factor of X is 1.2 so we might need to reset it back resetting it back where do we set it back? Let's say when it bows and the mount is outside, we're gonna set it back. Setting back the scale X 
currently it's uh, 120 percent we want to reset it back to 100 percent we're gonna have to decrease this to squash it by 80 percent 0.8 now hope that it's all good so running that again it should shrink down to a hundred percent um not a hundred percent to where the size where it uh, was before anyway that basically the um, the uh, how you create the bouncing icon and I just wish that there are more of a class like this that we can use it by the way but even if you don't have it you can just um, make your own classes and create whatever animation you like with the timeline animation that I just show you so basically what when the user use it you can they can basically just creating by that and don't even need that one and creating just like the way they created image view and then add set the FX to it and then add it to it this should give you some idea of the animation how to make the animation works on Java FX I think it's pretty cool so let's try that once more before I say goodbye for today that's it for video 27 thank you for watching goodbye